Welcome back to Robinson's Automotive, toolsandtime.com. I'm back with you today with the 2012 Chevy Cruze. Customer concern is that it just started running rough. Um, she thought she seen some smoke at the tailpipe as well. So it's here now, and we're gonna plug it in and see what kind of codes we have, and then hopefully it'll lead us in some kind of direction. So let's dive in there and see what we got. All right, so I will tell you that I cleared the codes because I had a whole laundry list. So I'm scanning it now after taking a road test to see what came up first. Because as soon as I took it for a ride, um, the check engine light did come on. And we're gonna go to diagnose, control unit, um, engine. Let's go into trouble codes. All right, so right away we got a P0171. This is a fuel system too lean. So it's not liking the fuel trims on this. So what we're gonna do is go monitor some data, but what are some of the things that pop into your mind right away? Like vacuum leak, low fuel pressure. We'll go into live data. Let's check out the fuel trims. So what we're gonna look at is short term, long term. So sometimes what you'll see here, and I'll show you this hopefully later on in the diagnostic process. When this goes in able, it's it's purposely running the system lean. That's that's to do with the EVAT. Okay, so I just want to monitor these three. We're gonna start it up. doing here give it a little bit of time you can see it's starting to add fuel on the short term it's already at 22 percent 28 30 now she's going to start acting up you'll start seeing that switch over to the long term to compensate we already know that we're way above the threshold so we definitely got a problem going on here it's running very lean. So what would you do next? Where would you take this? I think I hear a vacuum leak already. Let's check something. Oh yeah, I hear that. Weeks. All right, so what I usually do on these, just to make sure I'm in the right direction, which we know we have a, a major vacuum leak there, right? So here's the hose that goes up to the, the valve cover. This is gonna be a valve cover replacement here. I'm gonna take and pop this clip off, put it somewhere I don't lose it, all right? Now you're left with this gaping hole. I have a plug or a cap. Let's say rubber cap that goes here. That's going to stop the vacuum from coming into the engine. And then on this guy here, I'm going to take and pop this hose off and I'm going to cap that side. All right, so we have the PCB blocked. We have the EVAP purge solenoid covered. We're going to start this and see what our fuel trims look like. I can hear a difference already. Very much smoother. So you see our short terms at zero, long terms at 24. You can see we're starting to pull some of that fuel away. We're going to drive this down to zero. We're close to it. You should see us plus or minus less than 10%. Let's see what we got here. Already we're, we're at zero, so she's driving her down. 
when I say zeros, it's a combination of the two. So if you have like 20 positive, 20 negative, it kind of cancels itself out. When I'm doing this, I usually pop the dipstick out just to let the engine breathe a little bit. But as you can see, we're, we're near zero now. So I'm going to shut it off. It's going to need a valve cover. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply unplug everything here. This stuff just clips on. We're going to unplug the coil pack assembly. We're going to remove that. Then we're just going to simply remove all the bolts around the perimeter of the valve cover. If anything strange pops up, I'll, I'll turn on the camera and show you guys. But it's pretty straightforward. All right, T40. And then the perimeter is E10. I'm going to take and unplug this. Right, okay, now that we have the valve cover removed, I took and I cleaned everything up. I scraped off these two corners. You'll find that's where they apply silicone. It's wherever two maintenance surfaces uh, match up. So we're gonna wanna apply a little bit of silicone in each one of those corners. I sprayed a little bit of brake cleaner in there and let it evaporate. That way it's nice and clean. I went over everything here with the razor blade. If there was any kind of buildup, I got that off. Spray down brake cleaner, wipe it down. You don't want to use anything abrasive on here. All right, so we have our replacement valve cover. This is a Dorman. Um, comes with the gasket, comes with all new bolts. So it looks like we're pretty good here. I applied my silicone in each corner. So I'm just going to set that on there. I just got to use both hands. And... Uh, Hold the harness out of my way and finagle it in there and then we'll tighten her down. All right, so here's a little review before we start it up. Got the new valve cover on. Everything's clipped in place. This loom is just gone. I might put a little tape around here or something, but it doesn't look like it's gonna rub on anything. I just don't like this area. So I did the best I could with just wherever the wires are gonna touch. I just wanted to make sure I had a little bit of extra insulation, but I'm ready to start it up. We lost communication right now because she's not running. Here we go. Right, so far, I feel good. Let's come over here. Go back to fuel trims. Good sign so far. We want, you know, as long as we're below plus or minus 10%, you're usually safe. I like to see it close to zero, plus or minus, maybe five or three, ideally. So, so far, so good. Let's make sure we have nothing crazy going on up here. Just went into enable. What do you hear clicking? It's your vent. Or not your vent, your bird solenoid. Everything looks good. So I could hook all that back up. I feel pretty safe. You know, that's where she's sitting with the new valve cover. What I'll do is I'll shut it down. I'll hook the uh, bird solenoid back up. You will see it go what we look like lean, but the computer is going to expect it to be lean. Unhook that bad boy and we're going to plug this back in and then we're going to start it up. It will look, the fuel trims will look much worse during this condition 
because the computer's actually expecting it to go lean. So that's why you heard the purge cycle kick up there. Um, so let's hook this back up and we'll start it back up and let it run. I'll clear out the code. All right, we got everything hooked back up. We're gonna come out of here and go to the trouble codes, display. I wanna erase, okay. Yeah, one more time. Put this back in. Come over here. I'll show you I have everything hooked back up. All good. Uh, we're gonna go back to live data. And I can show you why sometimes this is misleading. Alright, now we're gonna start it back up. right around zero percent plus or minus purge valve is hooked up so you'll see it when it enables it's going to drive itself lean so see how it's going in and out there now it just went enabled all right guys i just got back from the maiden voyage it's getting pretty dark out here um, one thing I want to show you with this scan data that you can look at too, and what the computer is looking at. See your long term fuel trim test average without purge? Right there it is, 1%. Long term fuel trim test average, 8%. But then if you look right underneath it, long term fuel trim test average without purge. You know, that's like when I was blocking the purge off because I want to see what the real-time fuel trim look like. Let's see if we do have any trouble codes pending. That's a good idea. Nope, nothing. Just to show you that I did take it for a nice drive. Let's go to IM status and see what we completed. No, no catalyst. We complete it. Catalyst complete. Um, component monitor complete. EGR complete. Camshaft monitor complete, fuel system complete, complete. All right, right here, catalyst. This is just during this drive cycle. Uh, um, EVAP, okay, so if they complete a uh, EVAP uh, monitor during one of the cycles. All right, so I feel pretty good leaving it at this for the time being. I'm pretty sure we got it fixed. If anything pops up, I'll let you know. Um, I'm going to drive it for a little bit. I'm going to take this one home with me, and we're going to, you know, try to complete all the drive cycles. That way I know she's doing pretty good, and, and I can see how it how it's driving during the day because... I tell you, when I first got on it, once I got on 663, she, I blew some smoke out the tailpipe. And the, the owner, well, the mom, she was saying that when she was took it for a ride after her daughter told her that it was running poorly, that she noticed smoke. So I'm assuming with the crankcase not ventilating properly and could have been sucking oil, could also have been creating a little excess pressure. So I want to check it for leaks tomorrow. In addition, see how it runs during the daytime when I can actually see what's coming out the tailpipe. All right, guys, stay tuned.